Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this YouTube video. In this YouTube, I'm going to show you how to make some adorable cupcakes and cakes using my mini antler mold, part of my Nicholas Lodge collection by Katie Sue Designs. So now we're going to move on to talk a little bit about the antler mold. Now on um, YouTube, if you go to YouTube and you put in Chef Nicholas Lodge antlers, or you go through my Flower Pro uh, link, you'll be able to find, as I said, full tutorials on YouTube on using both the large antler mold and also the small antler mold, where I show how to obviously make three-dimensional half-relief antlers, talk about lots of different ways of using these. In this particular video, I'm going to concentrate on using the small antler. Now, the antlers come um, packaged. This is the large antler mold. And uh, there is a uh, sort of basically a leaflet inside here which goes through. But as I said, it's best to watch the YouTube tutorials because they will actually show you the, so all the steps of using this. So that is the large antler. And then this is the small antler here. All right, which again, this is obviously shown on, um, on YouTube as well as a separate YouTube. You'll see there's actually part one and part two. One is the large antlers, one is the small. On nicholaslodge.com, which is my website, you will find uh, the antlers. If you do a search on the shopping cart on antlers, you'll find the large antler and the small antler. We also do do a bundle, which will save you actually $6 on buying the two together. Um, so as I said, there is a saving of $6 if you buy both of these together. The large antler, very briefly, obviously makes this stunning um, antler. You can see here, this shows the large antler, a three-dimensional antler. And uh, obviously this is all shown on the YouTube video. We can also make uh, half relief antlers. So you can actually make like half relief antler, full antler like this. So like on the side of a cake, you could do those with a monogram in them. You could use them on a cake board. And um, you can also make just the tip part, which is the sort of the three points. An antler um, obviously is based on number of points. So this is a three point. So this will make, and you can see here, this is made in a natural um, antler color. And of course, you can also make these in more fantasy, which I talk about on the video. So this one was done in gray with a little bit of uh, silver paint on there, making it more contemporary. And uh, when you make the antler, um, obviously the two main parts of the antler, which is going to be the main part, and then this is the secondary part here. And you'll see this on the YouTube video. And basically that is how you create the full length antler with five points by using both components, all right? Um, but as I said, you can watch the full length tutorial and where I actually sort of show you how to use this. Um, and uh, when we do the three dimensional antler here, you actually are using the, if you're wiring this as again, which you'll see on the videos, then you see actually this is how you make the, the sort of the full antler. All right, so just watch the full length tutorial of how I make the large one. So in this uh, particular uh, video I'm going to concentrate on the small one and also just before I finish off there is also the little end cap here So when you are actually doing antlers you use that when you're doing an antler for the uh, little end cap here on the horn antler So if you're going to use this on top of a cake where you see this of course you can then actually mold this and attach it to the bottom And again, that's all fully um, explained and shown in the full length tutorial which are free to obviously access So that is the large antler and of course, the large antler could be used on a larger scale cake. Um, I'm going to show you both uh, little small cupcakes, a standard size cupcake, and then a little small like Rudolph, uh, the red-nosed reindeer cake, which is based on a four inch cake, four inch or 10 centimeter size cake. Now the small antler, when we do the small antlers, uh, as you will see if you watch my full length tutorial, I generally use gum paste or flower modeling paste, petal paste for these because I want them to dry uh, fairly quickly and hard so that these can actually be pushed and inserted into the top of the cupcake or the cake. When we do this, uh, there are two options. One is to use gum paste. So you could take obviously just like white gum paste here um, and taking white gum paste, you take this out of the pouch and then you color this with brown uh, is generally the color I'm using here. So just use a chocolate brown gel of choice to, to color that. The second option is to actually modify some fondant. And uh, so what we do is you will take now, um, I'm using here the Renshaw brand. Renshaw uh, brown fondant, like many brands of brown fondant, is quite dark. It's almost the looks of it black when you look at it in the package in there. So what I would generally recommend for the actual application I've used here, I've used a sort of a milk chocolate color. So what I do is you take just equal amounts of the brown and white fondant, and I just combine these together, okay? So here I actually have some 
100 grams of brown and 100 grams of white. Okay, and you can see the brown is quite a dark chocolate color. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna just incorporate these two fondants together. So just using my, and this is going to then turn this into more of a milk chocolate color here. So you see how you're just gonna mix this through. You see how it's gonna make it more of a milk chocolate. So generally this is a color I like to use on my pine cone mold, which again is part of the Nicholas Lodge collection from Katie Sue Designs. So my pine cone molds, my uh, winter spice, my nuts and berries mold, my holly and mistletoe, and my small and large antlers are part of my Nicholas Lodge collection by Katie Sue Design. And then I have Flower Pro. Flower Pro is more floral. So these are more sort of accents you'd use with flowers. Once you've mixed this through, we have this milk chocolate color. And this is actually what I use to cover the cake and also for the top of the cupcake. So I'm using fondant um, veneers on top of the cupcake, but this is actually what I would use to roll out and cover the four inch 10 centimeter cake, or obviously the top of the cupcakes. For the antlers and for the ears, I'm gonna turn this into gum paste. Um, now on some of my other uh, YouTube videos, I show this, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take 115 grams, and once you have 115 grams, Bring this up to, I'm just using here a little small mini scale, but just a regular kitchen scale. We'll do exactly the same thing. So I have 115 grams here of um, fondant. So this is, as I said, just the lighter chocolate brown. And because I want to convert this into gum paste or petal paste, I'm gonna use some Tylo CMC powder and I'm going to add half a teaspoon, all right? Now, if I was just going to convert this into like modified fondant to use, for example, in a lot of the molds, like for example, my pine cone mold, I generally make that in 50-50 paste or modified fondant, I would just put in a quarter of a teaspoon. But because I want this to become harder once it dries, I use a half a teaspoon. So I'm gonna take half a teaspoon of Tylo's powder, okay? Gonna add that to the 115 grams. Now 115 grams is basically four ounces or quarter of a pound. Um, you can also, um, if you wanted to of course do more, you could do double this recipe, but also if you're only gonna make a few cupcakes, like for example, say six cupcakes, you could actually just do 60 grams, which is obviously the closest way of dividing 115 in half. So there what you do, you take 60 grams of your fondant, and you'd add to that one quarter teaspoon. Here I have 115 grams and I have one half teaspoon, okay? And then I'm going to take about a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening. Uh, this is just Crisco, but any VAMP brand of vegetable shortening, you can also use um, even like a coconut oil as well can be used. As long as it's a vegetable based product. Just gonna just mix this through. And what this is going to do, this is going to modify the product, okay? It's gonna modify the fondant. So I'm going to just mix this through. And then once you've mixed this through, I'm going to pop this into a little bag here, which I have, which is just marked on here, uh, modified fondant. So this is modified, so I know this is modified. And then we need to leave this for generally about 10 to 15 minutes to firm up, okay? So remember, this is 115 grams basically of brown fondant. Now, if you don't have chocolate brown fondant, you could also just use white, color it chocolate brown, 115 grams, add a half a teaspoon of Tylo's powder to that. So I'm gonna pop that to one side. I have some that I've already have um, modified. So this has already been modified. And uh, so this is, as you can see, is now firmer, you see? And this is what we would use to make the components. Now I'm gonna start, start off by showing you how I made the antlers. Now when I, um, when I show on my YouTube video, I show the antlers just done as individual antlers. Here I'm gonna show you doing a little bit of a different technique where I'm gonna make them in a pair. Um, when you buy the molds from nicholaslodge.com, we will include a size guide. Um, for those of you who have obviously um, Flower Pro in the back of the Flower Pro book one and two, there is also a size guide in the back there. But I'm just gonna start off with a, about a number 12 size. So I have about one third below the paste, about two thirds the top. And then what I'm gonna do here is gonna take my paste. I'm gonna just condition this. I'm gonna add just a little bit of vegetable shortening to it. 
Now the reason why you want to leave it about 10-15 minutes, if we did this with the paste I've just, it feels just the same as fondant, so it would be a little bit sticky, so leaving it 10 or 15 minutes is going to firm up. I'm going to take the mold, I'm going to take just a little tiny amount of vegetable shortening, not much, just a small amount on my finger, and I'm just going to just push this into the mold, just a little bit of vegetable shortening into the mold like this. Now, so this is a slightly different technique than I show on the YouTube videos for making the individual antlers because I want to do these as a pair. And then I'm just going to just flatten this out like a little pad, like this. And then I'm going to actually use my rolling pin here and I'm going to just sort of start to roll this into the mold. This just makes it a little bit quicker for production work. And so see how I'm just rolling this into the your paste is a little sticky, don't worry about it. Just going to push this in and then you can just use your cosmetic sponge here and just continue to, to roll this into the mold. And if you have any areas where it, you just need to put a little bit more paste in there, that will be perfect, okay? Now then I'm going to take my little scraper. Now this is just a little small uh, mini scraper and I'm going to use a sawing action and with my scraper, I'm going to use this saw in action. So you see how what this does, this will basically just trim off all of the excess paste, okay? And I'm just going to use my cosmetic sponge here just to sort of press this in, but also this helps to just anchor this into the top of the mold. You see, so I don't have to sort of trim off any extra. And then I will then just use the same technique here now all of these items are on our website. This is a little small scraper. It comes in a pack of two. Um, this is my companion tool, which is a free gift with my ultimate filler flowers. We also do sell this separately. You'll find if you go to Flower Pro. So on the website, if you go to click on shop, and then once you click on shop, what you'll then do is you'll click on category. So you'll click on Katie Sue, and then you'll see as a subheading will be uh, Flower Pro. And this is, these are part of my Flower Pro accessories. So the little companion tool we sell separately. We also do sell this with the little mini pad. This is a little mini foam pad you'll see I use on a lot of my YouTube tutorials, okay? Now when you're doing, um, once you've got your paste in the mold, all right, this is level. So um, what you're gonna do is just remove any excess paste that's in here. Now you can make two different sizes of antlers. Like for example, this shows the full length antler here on the cupcake. All right, so this shows the full height antler, and then on the one here, um, I have the smaller antler. So this is basically just cut down from the original height. So you have the option of doing the longer or the shorter antler. And uh, on the cake, I've used the full length antlers. Now I'm going to use spaghetti. All right, this is just regular spaghetti. Um, what this does, this gives you a totally edible support system. Um, I'm very anti using wire and uh, things like that on uh, things like cupcakes, on the cookies where people could, for example, just choke on the wire. So um, basically pasta or, um, um, for example, noodles, you can use different types of noodles. And of course, spaghetti comes in all different thicknesses as well. You can get really, really thick spaghetti, which would be about the thickness of the companion tool, which would be like number seven, number eight thickness. So uh, this is just regular spaghetti. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the spaghetti and I want about um, one inch pieces, so about two and a half centimeters long. So I'm just going to just break the spaghetti. Okay, and then once you break the spaghetti here, we're going to take the spaghetti and I'm going to use some Superbond. Now Superbond is one of my Nicholas Lodge brand products. It's under my easy line. And um, Superbond is a really, really thick glue. You could also use piping gel here. You could use corn syrup, but just something that's really, really sort of thick. And what you do here is you take the, you see the little um, channel here. I'm going to take my spaghetti. I'm just going to push that in to here. So about half an inch is exposed. So I'm just a little bit sort of under them pushing it in. You see, so I pushed in about half of the spaghetti. Now, if you were doing, obviously you wanted one set of larger antlers, which is the bigger size one, you would just do exactly the same on the second one and then you remove them. Just to show you, if you're going to do the smaller antler, what I found works really well is to actually do this while it's in the mold because if you physically remove it and try and put the spaghetti in the shorter piece, you're going to end up destroying the uh, detail on the beautiful mold. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut this off with my companion tool. 
And my companion tool is wonderful because obviously it doesn't damage the inside of the mold. So if you're making smaller antlers, then again, I just put the spaghetti onto the piece of the, and I'm gonna just actually just lift this up slightly. So you see how I can expose this and it's gonna push this into the mold here again. So that's gonna go in. So again, about half an inch is gonna go into the mold and the other piece will be here, okay? So I've just shown you, of course, you would do two full-size ones or two short ones, depending on how you want to finish off your cupcakes, okay? Let's keep the lid on your Super Bond because it will sort of firm up uh, over the surface. But the Super Bond is a really, really thick glue and a great product too. So that's the uh, called Super Bond and it's part of my easy line where I have, uh, for example, edible glue and glue rollers and easy release and other products. Um, it forms a really strong bond. So when I do the three dimensional antlers, when I do my pine cones, you'll see how I use this. So now to remove these, what I'm gonna do is gonna just turn this over and I'm just gonna flex my mold back. And you see how I'm just gonna then just use my little scraper here. You see how that will come out beautifully out of the mold, you see? And this will give you your shape. And then you can put them on, this is my little silicone mat. You could put them onto a piece of fun foam to dry. Now, normally uh, when I've dried these, I actually dried these in a food dehydrator. So a food dehydrator is a really, really quick way if you're in a hurry. So like for example, in three or four hours, if I wanted to use these on a cupcake, what I would do is pop these in the food dehydrator. You just would take them off of here, put them onto the mesh so the air would dry the back of them as well. And usually I would set my food dehydrator. I have the Excalibur one at 115 degrees. Uh, for about an hour, 90 minutes, these will be totally dry, okay? Um, if you don't have a food dehydrator, you just need to let these dry for about three to four hours. Now, a lot's gonna depend on ambient temperature, humidity levels, but basically these are gonna dry uh, nice and hard because they've been done with gum paste, all right? Now, for the antlers here, I'm just doing half relief antlers. You don't have to make three-dimensional antlers, but once you get used to that, it's a pretty quick way to make a pair of antlers uh, in my mold, okay? Now, once you've got the antlers made, we would move on to other elements that we need for the, um, for the piece, which is going to include the uh, ears. And so uh, I have here, I've actually rolled out some uh, paste here, and I'm gonna just show you how I do the ears. Now I'm using a pasta machine, so I use the KitchenAid pasta machine. You'll see I use this in all of my, um, all of my videos. And uh, with the pasta machine, the advantage is, is everything is gonna be regular thickness, you know, regulates the thickness of the paste. So it means you don't have any um, worry about some things drying longer, taking longer to dry than others because they're an inconsistent thickness. I'm just gonna roll out my paste here. And then I'll just go through the pasta machine here. No. So I'm just gonna go through my pasta machine on number one. And uh, when you go through the pasta machine, you're just gonna put the paste through the pasta machine and um, here will come out your paste, you see? So this has just been rolled through number one. And I said, if you watch all of my videos, I pretty much on most of them show using the pasta machine. Now I'm going to uh, put this into plastic flap. So I'm gonna put this in my multi flap. And I've also rolled out some other elements I'll be showing you a little later on. So I've also rolled out some white paste and I've rolled out some white paste number three. Um, which is going to be used for the inside part of the year. So I have number one brown gum paste and I have number three white gum paste for the years. Now I'm using here, this is um, a seven piece rose petal set. All right, so again on our uh, website, if you just go to uh, put in rose petal on the uh, search engine, you could also use the plastic FMM set of five. So if you have a different rose petal set, basically it's sort of gonna work as long as it's different sizes. So for the small cupcakes, I'm using the two smallest sized cutters. All right, and then for the ears, for the four inch 10 centimeter cake, the Rudolph cake, I'm using uh, the number two and number three. All right, so the two smallest, and then the second and third, on in the set for the uh, larger ones. But if you're doing obviously bigger jumbo cupcakes or a bigger cake, you just find cutters that are gonna look sort of in scale for the ears. Now I'm gonna take my brown paste, all right? So this is my brown paste here. And uh, when you do the ears, all right, you're just gonna just cut out the ear shape. It's gonna pop this through. So remember, this is number one on the pasta machine and this is gum paste, all right? And if you're doing the larger ear, I'll show you one of those. So that would be done like this. Now, as soon as you've got your ears completed, 
I'm going to just pop them into my plastic flap because I actually want them to, this is just a way I found is just easier than messing around with glue and things. So I'm just gonna pop these into my plastic flap. So of course, if you are making six cupcakes, you're gonna need to make 12 ears, all right? Because you need obviously two per cupcake, all right? So that would be done in the brown. And as I said, that is the brown, uh, basically gum paste. So this is the same as I use. So you use the antlers and the ears because we want those to dry quickly. Now then you're going to then roll out some white gum paste and um, I've rolled this out number three. So this is thinner, okay? And then for the small ears, I'm gonna use obviously the very tiny cutter here. I'm just gonna pop these through with my companion tool. And then for the larger ear, I'm gonna use the second size up here. Now you could also do the ears with, um, you know, this technique can be used also for other things like unicorns and llamas and all different things. So of course you could sometimes in that situation, you might use pink um, instead of the, uh, the white. But for the deer, I found the, the white worked well. So what I'm gonna do here now, is just gonna just take the, the strip, the uh, little cutters here, and I'm just gonna lift these up. And you see, I'm gonna pop those onto the top here like that. And I put them towards the sort of the bottom and you see, by doing it in the plastic flap like this, what it means is we don't have to use any glue, you see? So you're just gonna just use some, just gonna pop that into there like that. So you don't have to use any glue because I'm going to actually press these. This is my multi-flap. Again, I use this a lot for gum paste flour making. And if you don't have one of these, you could use a zip top like freezer type bag. All right, but see how you just position the ears like this. Now we're going to then put the plastic on top you see now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just press this in with my, my thumb. So what this is gonna do is going to embed the, the white on top of the brown. So this looks sort of more natural, but it also means you don't have to mess around with glue because you're doing it in the plastic, okay? So then we're gonna take the ears out. So I'll show you the small ears first. So all I'm gonna do here is with my ears, I'm just gonna just sort of almost pinch it like a taco. So you're gonna get this slight sort of taco shape. So you're just gonna flatten it, just, just almost pinch the point part slightly. And then you're just gonna put your ears like they will actually sit on the cupcake here. Okay, and then I'm gonna just cut off a little bit. So I'm using my little scraper here, so think of the surface of the cupcake. So you're just gonna just cut those off like that. So you're just cutting it off because we're actually gonna just push a square part in. This just gives a better contact in the cupcake. And I'm using here a uh, crepe foam former. All right, so you're just gonna dry your ears in the crepe foam former like this, okay? So they just will dry. And again, this can go in the food dehydrator. The foam will go in the food dehydrator. Generally, I'd recommend making the antlers first, then do your ears, and then you wanna dry both of them so the ears and the antlers become hard. Now on the large one, you would just do exactly the same. And again, just gonna pinch that like that. And of course, you'd make a pair of these. And again, you just would cut off the bottom part of the ear like that, you see? And that again would just dry in the, just dry in the, in the foam, all right? So that would be sort of how you would do the large, large ears and the small ears, okay? So once you've got the ears um, done, now for the cake, all right, so if you're gonna be doing the little Rudolph cake here, you can see just gonna bring Rudolph in. So we obviously have his uh, ears and his antlers made. So now we'd move on to his eyes and his nose. Now for the small cupcakes, you don't really need anything else unless you are going to make uh, this one here, which I did as sort of really more of a rustic cake. So uh, now of course, I've done them very much the other ones as Rudolph, uh, which we obviously always associate with the holidays. But of course you could use the antlers for a, uh, for example, an outside wedding, a barn wedding, you know, where maybe a client is doing a sort of a rustic theme, you could do the antlers. So of course, these could be done in white, you could have roses here, you could have obviously dogwoods in the spring, you'd have hydrangeas, many, many different flowers there. Um, here I've used a little holly cut, a holly leaf there, just to give you a sort of holiday cupcake using the antlers, but not so whimsical as with the, so for that I'm using, um, when you use the, do the little cupcake, I use my uh, little holly cutter. So again, this is just a small holly cutter. So again, if you go to my website and just search, 
um, on just put in small holly, but it's under metal cutters. So this is a little small holly cutter. It's about three quarters of an inch uh, long and just over half, uh, just a little bit less than half an inch wide. So you just will cut out the little holly leaves. And this is adorable to use for all sorts of like applications um, during the holidays, gingerbread houses, little petty fours, you know, mini cupcakes, um, little plum puddings. You can do all sorts of fun things with this. And um, when you do the, when we do this, you can take these and pop them onto your back of your mini pad. So remember this little mini pad is, uh, comes with the companion tool. All right, so this comes with the companion tool and you can just use your companion tool and just do a little line on there if you want to. All right, and that just gives you like a little line on the cupcake, on the holly, and that would be used as well. And then just to show you the last uh, couple of components. So first of all, and then I'm going to show you how we build this. So first of all, the eyes. So when we do the eyes, all right, I've rolled out some white gum paste here. This is number one. All right, I'm going to show you how we make the eyes, which are here. Okay. And again, this could be used in all different colors and things. So I'm using here just a Wilton tip. Now Wilton tips are pretty thin. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna squash the Wilton tip here like that. So what I'm actually doing is I'm squashing it into like an oval shape. And then I will actually be able to use this to make my little eyes here. Okay, so that's gonna give you your eye shape. And then of course, when you finish this project, you just put it back on your finger and you can just re-bend it back to shape, all right? So just however many eyes you need, you're going to just finish those off and then you will do that. Now I'm going to pop these onto my pad. So of course, you know, however many eyes you think you need, you're going to just put those onto your pad like that. I'm going to use my companion tool, rounded end. I'm just going to make a little indentation. Okay. And then I'm going to use here, this is a needle tip glue applicator, all right? So this is, again, the product that we sell on our website. And you can use this for, um, this is, I've got here, piping gel. So this is wonderful, piping gel. And when I teach classes on air drying clay, I use this for my PVA white school glue, okay? But it's wonderful, it's got a silicone end on here. And so then you're just going to use your piping, just a little bit of piping gel into those two cavities. You see, just pop the lid on here and your piping gel. This is really good when you don't need a lot of piping gel. And then I'm going to use here some uh, black um, pearls. These are candy pearls, all right? So these are black candy pearls here. And I'm gonna use bead-in tweezers. Again, I'm showing these are all products we have on our website. So these are silicone tip tweezers. I'm gonna use these. This makes it really, really easy to pick up the large uh, dragees nonpareils. Just gonna pick these up like this, and you see how that is going to make then your pair of eyes, you see? All right, and again, these would need to dry. And I've used, um, obviously, black candy pearls because the candy pearls are easy to eat. And of course, you could also make little black balls of paste, which would be about number uh, four size on the size guide. So you can actually just roll black balls of gum paste, and then you can put them onto, onto here. I'm going to show how to do the nose using that technique, so you'll see how that works in a moment. Now, when I did the cupcakes, um, when I did these cupcakes, all right, so basically I'm going to show you uh, the end, sort of how I finish this off, but I've used the little small red nonpareils, and I'll show you how we attach those uh, when we do the finishing up. Um, so you don't need to make any red berries there. <coughs> now, the nose, when we make the nose, there are two ways to make this. One is to take some red gum paste, so this is just some Renshaw red gum paste, which comes in red. And then what you'd actually do here is you're gonna make a number 10 size. All right, so it's gonna just take a number 10 size ball of paste. So just like I showed the number 12, you'd measure the number 10. So you'd have about a third below, two thirds above, okay? Just pop a little bit of cornstarch on your hand here, and you're just gonna roll this into a nice smooth ball, okay? So we're gonna roll this on your hand to make a nice smooth ball. I'm gonna bring in my foam here. So with my foam, I'm gonna just pop the little ball into my crepe foam, all right? So that's gonna give you the shape. Now again, I'm gonna take a piece of spaghetti, about two inches here, a little bit longer, so about two inches in length, okay? And then again, we're gonna put some super bond onto the 
tip of this, so a little bit of super bond. And I'm just gonna just push this into the nose. All right, so it just wants to, and the crepe foam will support the shape of it. And again, this can go in the food dehydrator, okay? And uh, so what this means is gonna give you the nose, all right, so that will dry. Now an alternative, which works really well, is to take a gumball. Now a gumball, of course, is shiny, a little tiny bit bigger than number 10, but it would be fine. So what you do here is you'd make a hole in the end of the gumball using your, uh, using your scribe needle. And then you would put a piece of spaghetti, a little bit of um, super bond on there, and then put the spaghetti in. So you see how here then your, your spaghetti will stick. So you just need to put the super bond around where this meets, okay? And just leave that to dry. Now on the, um, when you're doing the, um, the actual nose of the, this is a dry one here, to make that shiny, once this is dry, I just take a little bit of vegetable shortening and I just rub this over the surface. And you see how then the nose will become shiny, you see? All right, but you do that just before you put that and you just will then put, when you push that in the cake, this will go in at an angle, but just leave that to dry and then you can put the, um, the uh, obviously the shine on the nose. So those are all of our components, all right? So those are our components that we use for the cake. Now, as far as uh, moving on to explaining about the cupcake, right, this is basically a standard cupcake, all right? So what I would do, just have this step, step by step. You're gonna use a uh, cora here, so you just would go in there with a cora. So you'd obviously just core your cupcake and pull out your core, okay? And so then what I do is when you pull the core out, so you wanna cup, cup, go right the way down to the bottom, just cut a little bit off the core and pop it back in. So you just wanna seal the base of the cupcake, okay? Next step, we're gonna fill this with some candy. I've got here some little holiday uh, M&Ms, so you're just gonna sort of fill that up into the middle, so you get a little surprise in the middle here with the little candy of choice. You could also use you know, other different types of chocolate candy, but obviously this is festive with the red and green. Um, then you would cap the top of that off with buttercream, so then you fill that in with a chocolate buttercream. I've done this on a um, vanilla cupcake, but of course you could totally do a chocolate cupcake or red velvet would also be very appropriate for the holidays as well. And then you then just cap the top off of this with some chocolate buttercream, okay? So just gonna cap the top off of that with buttercream. And then using, once it's crusted a little bit, using some paper towel, you're just gonna smooth that to get your shape. Now at that point then you would roll out some fondant. So you would just would roll out some, remember this is straight fondant, this is not the gum paste, this is just the lightened fondant, all right? Um, also to cover the cake with this, you then would cut a disc of fondant. And then once you've covered, you've got the disc of fondant created, you just would attach that to the top, all right? And generally your cutter is gonna be just usually a little bit bigger than the size of your cupcake. So when you're using a nesting cookie cutter set, because you have to allow for the almost like the mushroom shape on the top. So your fondant would just be attached to the top of the cupcake. So now we can actually build um, the cupcake here. So with the cupcakes, we're gonna take your, so these are obviously, um, antlers are dry, okay? So these antlers are dry. So first of all, I'm going to just decide where I'm gonna put the antler, all right? I'm just gonna put the, push the antler in and the other one here. So just sort of hold them so you get your antlers into position like that. I generally just go in with my companion tool or with a scribe needle just to make sure that there's no obstruction there because you know if you've got candy if you've got candy fill in the uh, interior and especially if it was hard candy like cinnamon red hots or whatever you don't want it to hit anything and break the spaghetti now this is um here i have some brown fondant this is just the same brown fondant all right so what you do is you take a little bit of your just your brown fondant you've used to cover your cake make your cupcakes and i put this in a little container here and then what you do is you're just going to take some um, water in a spray bottle, you just add a little bit of water at a time, okay, and you're just gonna just gonna stir this up. So literally this is just fondant and water, okay? So this is just the brown fondant, the light and brown fondant and water, and I've made up a, and this is gonna make a strong glue, okay? So this is, uh, as I said, I use this in a lot of different things for stenciling, I use for piping, filling in gaps on cakes, but here we're using it for an application of using it to adhere things. So I put some of this in a small parchment bag. Now there's no set recipe here, you just add enough water to the fondant until you get a sort of piping consistency, a little bit like a royal icing. We're now going to take your 
here and I'm going to put a little bit of that softened fondant just into the cavity here and here. Okay, and I'm going to pop my antlers into place here so they will actually be pushed into the cupcake here and here. So you see the antlers will sit here like this. Okay, now I'm going to take my ears. I'm going to put the little ears onto the cupcake. So I'm just going to make a little mark here with the actual ears. So these are uh, dry. And then I'm going to take a ribbon insert tool. So this is just a little tool we use for um, cake and for cookie and things. So I'm just going to just use that and just going to make this little slot. Again, then you're just going to put a little bit of that softened fondant into here and into here. And this is going to just attach for the ears. You see, so the little ears will go into there beautifully. And then here, we'll do this on the other side. So the little ears, like so. Okay. And then I'm going to use just a very simple on this one. You can use um, candy. This is like cinnamon red hot. You have like little M&Ms. You could do a small gumball. I mean, it sort of depends on how big you want the nose to be. But uh, you can also use the little small... Uh, these are actually the little, um, you know, mini M&Ms. So there's lots of different candy choices there you can use. And candy, especially on something like the cupcake, because you're going to eat this, something that I would suggest rather than using a ball of paste. Um, so you're going to put the... Now again, of course, the nice thing about when you're doing the, um, the, say, cinnamon red hots is that they're, you know, taste nice, but also they're shiny as well. So we can just put a little cinnamon red hot there for the for Rudolph's nose okay so fun fun to do all right so obviously for those of you watching who have children grandchildren it's sort of a fun festive little cupcake something they could even have help you make the ears and the noses and things like that so that's the Rudolph cupcake um, and as I said, you know, you can do this with the longer, with the larger antlers or the shorter antlers. Um, shorter ones usually are probably a little bit, as I said, uh, easier and obviously proportion wise, but you could do the full length antlers as well. These are little small wooden discs I found online. Some craft stores sell these. It's a nice sort of rustic presentation, but looks really cute. You also, of course, could write somebody's name on here. So you could do these as name place markers for Christmas as well. And when I did the large, um, uh, the larger, obviously, one with the holly. Um, when you attach the holly, what you get your holly stuck on, so I just use some of the brown paste, and then I just put some piping gel in the middle of the holly here. Just put a little bit of piping gel in the middle of the holly. And uh, I'm going to use some non pareils. So, non pareils are these little tiny, tiny. Uh, here I've got some black and some white and red ones. So, for the non pareils, I'm going to use um, this is a little. Um, Drage pickup tool, all right? Uh, this comes in a little set. Again, it's called a Drage bead pickup stick, all right? It's a product that we have uh, on our website, uh, $3.99, and it comes with a little um, applicator, it comes with a little tray, and also with the wax. Now, this wax that it comes with, this is orthodontic wax, okay? So if you ever run out, which you, this is gonna last you forever, but if you ever need any more of this, um, you can just use, uh, this is orthodontic wax used for braces. So you just buy this at any drugstore. So what you do here is you just peel back the plastic. Think of this like a little apple corer. And what you do here is you're gonna just take your, uh, the end of this, and you're just gonna press this into the wax. So you're gonna get this little uh, wax in the very, very end of the applicator. And you see, then you're going to take this product, and then with this, you can just pick up the beads really, really easily, you see on the end of here, and just attach those to your, to your piece like this, all right? So this is a really, really easy way to pick up very, very small dragees. Um, the white ones can be used in replacement of piping, so if you're doing cross-stitch design on cookies, you could use white ones instead of doing royal icing, where typically you get a little bit of spike on them. So it's a really fun tool, um, as I said, drage uh, pickup tool, and uh, as I said, works really, really well for picking up, especially the smaller uh, little dragees. Um, so those are our uh, cupcakes. And then as far as the cake itself, all right, when you're doing the Rudolph cake, what I've done there is I've used, um, obviously, the same technique for the antlers at the top here. 
and then I've put the, um, the eyes on with the softened fondant. Because the softened fondant dries nice and quickly, you could also use super bond. And then when you attach the nose, you want to put the nose in at an angle, so the nose will go in at an angle, um, so it will stay nice and stable in the cake. And then once your fondant's dried a little bit, I just use the food art pen, uh, and I've just drawn the little eyebrows above the top of the eyes, um, uh, just to finish that off. You could also paint that with some black gel color, uh, using obviously a paintbrush. So I hope you will have fun making these uh, Rudolph and uh, obviously antler themed cupcakes and cakes. Uh, for the holiday season. So happy holidays and until next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge, Sweet Wishes, see you soon.